Alright guys, so it's not every day that I find a device that changes the way we do podcasts. And this is it, this is the Zoom P4 Pod Track. This is a new device by Zoom that they released somewhere at the end of last year. Um, and it was specifically designed for podcasters who want a simple setup, something that doesn't need too many wires or too many extra devices, an all-in-one setup that's not only compact, portable, but also simple to use. So this is the Zoom PodTrack P4, um, very kindly sent to me by City Music, so a big thank you to them. Go check them out, they have a lot of other devices from Zoom, they have a lot of other products, audio equipment, recording, mixes, um, all that good stuff, just go check them out. So a big thank you to them for sending this over and this really answers all my prayers. I mean, the last time I had to set up a podcast, man, it was such a pain in the ass. I had a single device from Zoom, I think it was the H5 that was the main recorder. It had only two XLR inputs, so which means I could only have two guests. And it only had one headphone outlet, which means I needed to have a headphone amplifier or a splitter. And that headphone amplifier or splitter required power, which basically tied down my whole setup. So. When, when I found out about this from my good friend James, he, he did a review about this, go check that out as well. When he told me about this, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get this right now. I need this in my life. And thank God it came. And I've been using it ever since for all my podcasts. And now I can have up to three guests. So simple, so easy. And the best thing about, the, the thing that I love about doing podcasts is that I get to go to the location where my guests feel at home or, or, or you know, the place where they work and the place where they're the most creative. And this allows me to do that. So the Zoom P4 has a couple of very interesting features. We're gonna go through all of them today. I'll tell you what I like and dislike about this device. Well, most of it I like, but uh, there's definitely some flaws. So let's go through all of them. Now the Zoom P4 has, like I said, four XLR inputs. Now these are um, not one of those that has the clicky thing that secures it, but that's totally fine. You're not going to be um, recording a rock band where the guitarist is going to run around and, you know, might yank out the cable. Uh, so that's perfectly fine. You don't need that. It actually fits very well into the XLR inputs. Each of these inputs uh, have a gain knob, so you can adjust the individual gain up to 70 dBs, which is pretty good for a device this small and a device that's this affordable. Now the other thing about these four XLR inputs is that each of it individually is able to supply 48 volt phantom power for any microphones that need those. And if you don't, you can just leave it toggled off um, and just use it with the other mics. Now the last two actually have some extra toggle options. Uh, one is for the cell phone and one is for a USB input. So this lets you connect a phone or any calling devices with a 3.5 inch TRRS jack into the device. And you can basically call a friend and act as your own radio station. You can call a friend and get them on the podcast and everything's going to be recorded into the same device. So that's pretty cool. The other one uh, allows you to connect a USB input. So there are a couple of USB ports on the sides and I'll explain them in a bit. But basically you can record like your computer audio onto this device as well. Let's say uh, you're having a podcast and you both are watching a video. So you want to record that sound simultaneously so you don't have to sync it up later again. Um, this is very useful for that. In terms of the audio recording for this device, uh, it basically records each XLR input into separate tracks, which gives you a lot of flexibility in how you want to mix and balance out uh, everyone's volumes in case one of your guests is a bit louder than the other. You have that flexibility because you can control just his track and uh, you know just give him a bit of a boost or lower him a bit. That's totally fine. Uh, the other thing is that there are some sound effect pads here which we will go through later. Those are also recorded on a separate track which gives you the ability to remove it if you had second thoughts on the sound effects. And lastly, the last thing that this thing records is actually a mix of all the different inputs into one file. That gives you a very quick turnaround time in case you need to send the file out immediately and you don't think you need to adjust anything else. So you guys might be wondering, how are we going to power this? Um, like I said, this is a portable device, which means, yes, AA batteries. Now, AA batteries means two things. Firstly, it's easy to find in case you forget, uh, in case you run low on battery, you can just get someone to run down to the store and get another one. Uh, secondly, it is very easily available. You can use it for, uh, you can get rechargeable batteries. So that lasts a long time and you can just swap them out. You can just get a bunch of 
double A batteries and you basically have an infinite amount of power. But that being said, double A batteries aren't always the most reliable. It's not a very large capacity, especially if you're going to use all the phantom powers here. So they do give you an option to power it via a USB-C input here, which is a DC 5 volt input. So that's very convenient because nowadays everybody has power banks. Just bring one big brick along with you and you can power this the whole day. Okay, maybe not the whole day, but a lot longer than a double A battery. So that's very convenient. I just uh, recorded an outdoor podcast using this one. It was the first outdoor podcast I ever recorded. And that power bank and the USB input just gave me a peace of mind knowing that this will not run out of battery uh, or power. So right next to the DC power USB port, there is also a data USB port right here, which is a USB-C, very good. Uh, this allows you to firstly transfer all the data from this device, which is recorded on an SD card. Transfer all of this into your computer, um, save it and do all the good stuff, but it also allows you to record sounds off your computer onto the device. Like I said just now, maybe you're in a podcast, maybe you have a computer in front of you and you're playing some kind of video or music, it records it directly to this and you know, it syncs up everyone's audio and you know, just less of a hassle uh, in post editing. Uh, the other thing it can do is also record out to a computer device. So this acts as a mixer uh, where you can have all your XLR inputs into this and recording onto your computer directly. And the great thing about that is that you can also record it simultaneously with the SD card. So now you have a backup recording here as well as one on your computer. The only thing is that the one that's recorded on your computer cannot be separated into different tracks. It will most likely be recorded into a single track because it is a single input. So before this, I did mention that there is a port on the side, a 3.5mm jack port that accepts a TRRS cable that connects to your phone. This allows you to get people to call in and be part of your podcast, which is really cool. Um, and the special thing about this device is that it has a feature called the Mix Minus. Now, in a very simple terms to try and explain this, um, sometimes when a caller calls in and is being looped through a mixer or recorder, he hears his own voice being recorded and, and there's this weird feedback loop. So the Mix Minus basically cuts off his voice from being repeated back to him. Um, the caller still can hear everybody else, everybody else still can hear him, but he does not hear his own voice being repeated to him in a weird echoey way. Uh, I hope that's clear enough. It's a bit hard to wrap your mind around it, but basically it's an automatic feature that you don't have to worry about. So a mix minus feature, you guys can Google that and find out more. Really good feature. Now there is an additional device, um, a Bluetooth adapter that you can attach to these two ports. I don't see a big use for it. If you're someone who's going to have a person calling in, I'd rather hardwire it and just, you know, get a direct connection to it. So the Bluetooth thing is an add-on, so you have to buy it separately. It's an accessory. But, you know, go ahead and buy it if you want to. Um, it's nice that they have these accessories to make it a bit wireless, but I don't see the reliability in that. Um, I'd much rather rely on a solid cable. So let's very quickly go through the control of this device, uh, starting from the top. Now we have four of these knobs here that control the gain input from the microphones. Now, if you're recording with different brand microphones, different models, they all have different inputs coming in and you kind of want to balance them. So this is the best way you can do it uh, using these four knobs. Right under the knobs, you have the toggle switches. The first two just allows you to toggle Phantom on and off. The third one allows you to toggle to the TRRS cable mode, which is connected to your phone. So basically toggle to the phone mode. And the last one allows you to toggle to the USB input mode, which allows you to record from your computer. So you will always get a maximum of four inputs at one time, so you can't go more than that. Um, right underneath there, there is mute buttons. So you can see I'm clicking each of them. Um, they light up in red, really good because it's really bright. You can see whether you are muted or not. Um, and that's really good. The only thing is that it has this little clicky sound that isn't great, especially when you're recording in a very quiet room. Um, I would not much rather have this in a very soft rubbery button. I think that would have been better, um, but not such a big issue. Um, right below that, we have the sound pads over here, A, B, C, and D. They do have preloaded sound effects inside there, um, but you can also put in your own sound effects, you know, like an intro music or um, specific sound effects. Uh, that's totally up to you, uh, but I won't cover that. There are plenty of tutorials out there that teaches you that. Uh, right next to it, we have uh, a really large screen. Um, I say this is large because there are some recorders with really small ones. I think this is sufficient. Right underneath, you have the menu button, the play pause button, the stop button, and the enter button, uh, or the record button. Now, um, I do have to say that the record button is pretty small, and 
When you start recording, there isn't a very large indication that you've started recording. Now, this is a small issue that could turn into a big problem. Um, as you can see, I already hit record and a very small, tiny red dot just turns up. You know, it's smaller than all of these other things. I would much rather have you know, a giant bulb or something like that light up in red to tell me that I'm recording. Because there are a few instances where we forgot to press record, uh, even though we have everything set up and the last thing we needed to do was press record. Um, and lastly, at the bottom, we have the individual headphone volume knobs. Um, this is very convenient because, you know, each of your guests might want to have their volumes adjusted slightly differently. Some of them might not want to have you know, loud, loud voices in their headphones and some of them might want to hear you a bit more clearer. So you can adjust it for each one of them. So they have all the four uh, headphone outputs at the bottom here, which is pretty convenient. Um, I do have to say that the one thing I didn't really like about this device is that it has, you know, wires coming out the top, wires coming out the bottom. It's a bit hard to place this other than flat on the table. There is a guy that actually did a 3D printed um, sort of holder that kind of reverses the headphone wires and gets it out from the top as well, making it easy to just stand this up on the table and have all the wires coming out the other end. Um, not a big problem, but I just felt like, you know, that could be something improved. Although I do understand that this might have been a design consideration to keep the cost down and also keep it as compact as possible. Yeah, not a big deal. Uh, before I forget, inside the menu, you can program limiters for each of the individual mics. You can turn these limiters on or off depending on the microphones you're using or the person who's speaking. Uh, for example, if I'm a very loud person on mic one, I can turn the limiter on on mic one uh, and leave the rest off. So that's a flexibility there. So I'm not gonna go through too much into the menu. That's gonna be a really long video, but um, they do have these functions that are, I thought I should highlight and it's pretty important for um, just recording basic audio. Now that we have talked about all the features, how to control this device, let's talk about what I really love about this and then what I hate about it. All right, so firstly, what I love about this, firstly, it's an all-in-one system. You just need one device and your podcast is basically set up. Like I said, when I found out about this, I was like, oh my gosh, my prayers have been answered. This is what I've been wanting for. And I think Zoom was really intelligent. It really came out at a great time when podcasting was just picking up, you know, and people were figuring out what's the best way to set up my setup without too much devices, too much wires or com overcomplicating things. And Zoom has done that. They've, they've, they've uncomplicated. Is that a word for uncomplicated? They've simplified. They've simplified podcasting into a single device. The next thing I really love about this is that they've made it affordable. Now, this isn't too expensive mainly because firstly you're using it as a mixer for podcasting uh, you can get many inputs so that's already a very impressive thing secondly you can just use it as a daily recorder for just normal audio and two three hundred dollars for a zoom recorder is pretty affordable uh, and i'm pretty glad that they priced it this way they did have some compromises using a plastic body um, and you know the shape isn't too nice but i'll get into that later but yes, very affordable. And I think anyone starting a podcast should just invest in a simple device like this. Uh, maybe spend maybe two or 300 more on microphones and just some cheap headphones. And there you go, you have your podcast ready to go on a professional setup. The power options on this thing is also pretty impressive, uh, allowing you to either use a USB input or a AA battery gives you the flexibility basically. And that's what we need. We need flexibility, we need convenience, and they've packed it all uh, very simply into the different power options. So that's another thing I really love about it. And lastly, I think this is pretty obvious, but the way the whole recording system has been set up to record individual tracks, um, yes, obviously this is made for podcasting, so you want individual tracks, but I think it's very simple to use. Uh, once you open up all the files, you get what you need. It's easy to sync up. Um, it's easy to remove tracks, put in, balance it, all that good stuff. Um, so very easy to use device with all that flexibility. The sound beds I don't really use that often. Um, I guess it's pretty entertaining for those of you who likes all these funky sounds. Um, they could be pretty fun. Um, but for me myself, I don't really use them a lot um, and I'll just keep them, you know, there. I wish it could be programmed for other things like, um, I don't know, other, other features. So let's go on to what I don't like and I'm gonna be pretty critical about this because I'm already in love with this device and I really had to struggle to find what I didn't like. So this might be a bit nitpicky, but 
Uh, let's go ahead with the form and the shape of it. It's kind of a weird shape, don't you think? You have this kind of weird Y shape. Um, mainly to accommodate, obviously, the four XLR inputs and at the same time keep your hand, um, giving your hand a nice grip. Um, I did find it a bit weird. It's kind of hard to fit into your bag. It, you know, you, you, if you had a pocket size this big, it just wouldn't fit in all the way and that's kind of weird. Uh, the other thing I said before is like, you know, having the XLR outputs coming out one side and the headphone jacks coming out one side, it's just a whole mess. You just get wires coming out from every end of the device. I wish it was just all on one side. But like I said, there could be reasons why they've done it this way to keep it compact, uh, affordable, and also optimal positions, you know, all that good stuff. Um, not a deal breaker at all. Now, I do have to disclaim a pretty big issue with this device, and that's the hissing sound that comes out from the headphone amps. Now, this could be the result of using cheaper amplifiers here, um, and this hissing sound, it's pretty obvious, and I've checked with other friends who have the same device, they also experience the same thing. Other YouTubers have mentioned this as well in their reviews. This hissing sound that comes off from the headphones, pretty annoying and it kind of defeats the purpose of headphones. You, you, you want to have that clear audio to know what exactly you're recording. And with this hissing sound, you're always doubting yourself. You know, is the hissing sound going to be recorded or is this just something from my headphones? Thankfully, it's not being recorded into the track. So that's how we know it's mainly from the headphone outputs only and not from the microphone inputs. Nevertheless, I think that's something that they could improve on and something that's pretty important and kind of a downside for this. Now, the last thing I would say I don't really like about this device is um, that it firstly doesn't come with any tripod mounts or any way to mount this. So you're pretty limited to just a tabletop unless um, I discover a hack where you just use a phone clamp and you can clamp it to basically anywhere. Um, but I felt they should at least include like a um, tripod thread screw hole here so that we can mount it to different things. The other thing I don't really like is that obviously it's made of plastic to keep the cost down, uh, but that means you do have to take care of this device, not throw it anywhere. It's going to be a bit fragile. Uh, it's been pretty robust so far, but do take care of it. It's made of plastic. And lastly, I would say the main thing is the record button. Um, I wish the indicator was a bit brighter, a bit bigger, sort of a bigger LED button. Um, to tell people that you're recording or not, I think that's a crucial thing when it comes to building a recorder. Uh, there might be reasons why they kept it small, but to me, it was way too small. Like I said, from experience, we have forgotten to press record on this device multiple times, and it wasn't obvious because of all the other big red lights that are around it. You don't see that little small record light there. Um, yes, a big problem for me. But that being said, I still love this product. This, this was an ingenious product that everyone has been waiting for. Everyone, I mean like podcasters, basically. Uh, we've been waiting for a device that just solves all our problems. You can have multiple guests, headphones are all settled, power, recording into different tracks, everything on the PodTrack P4. So that's my review for this. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know there are very uh, many questions out there about the different menu systems and other audio stuff, but um, do check out other reviews. Of course, I've always said this, don't just listen to one reviewer, check out multiple reviews before you buy things like this. Uh, but for me, this has been the workhorse for all my podcasts. If you guys want to check out the podcast as well, I'll link some of them somewhere. Um, but yes, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, give it a like if you like this, subscribe if you haven't. Share this with any of your friends looking to get a P4 podcaster. And yes, I'll catch you guys in the next one.